step. So I take adjustments in the walk, but it's always upward transitions, upward transitions, even though they might be minuscule. So then even if I'm walking and then I walk faster, if they adjust with me, I click and reinforce it. Mm -hmm. So that's where we have to start. That's where we start. Yes, yes. And then and then you slowly get to the trot. And if I got like two steps to trot, I'd say that's it for today. Yes. And, and realizing it's a lot for some horses, you know. So we get kind of focused on the exercise, but for some of them it's just too much, you know. So it's different not to pass or bend them. Uh-huh. So wouldn't know what to do if you asked her to go faster. Right, yeah. right. And we can see if you want to try this, we can try and see what she does. If that feel, just read it. To, and we could just walk with her. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be anything. Like sometimes just getting that, like you can see I walk to the outside, then I step to the inside. Sometimes I go, oh, you're out. <laughs> and you're like, no, I'm right here. But it feels different. They all think differently. So just getting her to walk in those places in both directions and staying with you. And the big thing is they have this whole area. Mm -hmm. They could go run and do what they want, mm -hmm. and they don't, you know, and so I think that that's an important part. And these are horses that have been, had, this is their second session in a straight yeah. fight, mm -hmm. you know, so this is kind of the draw to positive reinforcement. Mm -hmm. How is Winnie? He's pretty, pretty good. He's we, a great we lost, we lost a little focus over here. says he was just a little bit more nervous mm -hmm. so he was more focused on you know looking in the mirror and you know whatever is going on he's the least self-assured yes okay so he's, he's more emotional and he'll, he depends on his buddy yeah and i kind of and you can kind of feel that him wanting to do everything so perfectly right mm -hmm. is probably part of him you know wanting to get it all right and be more worried so there he looked off and then when he came back over his attention came back to me, I clicked his focus back to me. I should feed that to that What? I said I should feed you. That was loud for you. <laughs> too much distraction going on walking is where you start you know what I mean it's Ferrari kind of set a high bar you know because he's like I got it I'm acing it so if you need to kind of break it down to little pieces you do so it again it is not a golden rule that this is how it's done it was I'm reading what he needs and I felt like Ferrari was going to feel good about being able to move a little bit so so we did you know and he and then let's say I asked him and he's like, well, I how about, okay, same, same speeds. Because <laughs> I want it to be a good association first, you know, before we turn it into a work cycle. Coming? Oh. I didn't care. I'm polite. <laughs> and you can see how, like, he needs more support. He needs Jesse closer. Ferrari, I could fade in pretty quick. <coughs> Ultimately, we just want to be a little circle in the middle. We're like, you know, walk, trot, canter, you know, whatever it is, where we can stay back, we can see what they're doing. If you're too close, you can't see if their head's down or not. But once they get it, you can now kind of start to see, how are they using themselves? How are they going? Well, you can see why it's important that we have a big enough circle, a big enough track for the horses, that they can be balanced. Because a tiny circle is just never a good thing. But with any, you know, consideration. Okay. 
okay. Encourage this a little bit. Sometimes they just trip on it, so it doesn't always help. Depends on the horse. And for a horse who doesn't like moving all so much, we might go out and do like a little bit of movement and then stop and then go do mounting walk and other fun stuff and then maybe end with a trot you know what i mean and so not just drilling it knowing that i got it once and if i know that i have a horse who's not henley is not the biggest canterer you know she does when she's in the field and playing but she's not like she's more i'm going to stop and look at things so i have yeah, my work cut out for her so what i do is when she comes out on a fresh day i go right to it you know, so I'm more likely to get it. I feed it a lot. We move on to other things. Mm -hmm. You know, in summertime, it's going to be a little challenge. But so, so trying to kind of create it. And if I know she just ran all morning up in the field with the others, that's probably not going to be the ideal day to try. So until she kind of, I built some reinforcement history behind it. I've had a, a lot of thoroughbreds in my life, and I love it. I just go, 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 go. I like getting on just go easy. Okay. And I get along with it really well. Um, you know, the, and I can just sit there and go, <laughs> and then they go, <laughs> so, so, you know, it's used to goey goey, but you get some little not go. Again, the attitude is the hardest part, the most important part. It is more than anything. When you get the attitude right, teaching stuff is easy breezy. But it's getting that attitude right and getting it consistently right. Because some days you're like, it was great today. And then the next day you're like, and that's a thing to keep in mind. Training is not linear. It just doesn't go, it goes, you know, and that's just how it goes. Who is the list? Oh, this is.